Okay, let's figure out how to minimize cost for this kind of production function. And we're not given any information about prices, wages, R, so we're just going to have to leave them as R. We don't actually need this guy, though. All right, we're not given the value Q either. Uh, we're just going to basically solve this in the most abstract way. All right, so the Lagrangian, we first set up, uh, we need the cost side. So we have W times L plus R times K. We don't know what W, L, R, or K are, but that's okay. We can still solve this plus mu times Q minus, we actually have a function now, Q to the one fourth times L to the one fourth. Okay. All right. So let's uh, take the derivative with respect to L and we get W. And then we have plus mu times uh, a negative sign. And we have one fourth coming down from our L. We have K to the one fourth. And we have L to the negative three fourths. All right. The derivative with respect to K is R minus, uh, you know, because that's the derivative of this term here. The mu is here. We're going to uh, take the derivative of this term over here with respect to k, and we get one fourth times k. We subtract one, and we get negative three fourths from the exponent, and we leave the l alone. And then we also have to take the derivative with respect to mu. That one's easy, though. We get q minus k to the one fourth times l to the one fourth. Next step: set everything equal to zero. All right. Step three, or step four, solve the system, which is, in some sense, a pretty big step. Okay, so these look pretty nasty. You may be intimidated, but again, a little trick here is whenever you have these Cobb-Douglas stuff, things work out okay if you carefully divide one equation by the other. So let's first simplify these by adding this big chunk to the other side, and we get W is equal to mu times one-fourth times k to the one-fourth times l to the negative three-fourths. And on this one we get r is equal to mu times one-fourth k to the negative three-fourths times l to the positive one-fourth. Now we're going to divide both sides of this equation by the same, by the other equation. So we divide both the left-hand side by r, the right-hand side we could divide also by r, that'd be legal, but instead they're equal to this thing and that will be simpler. Why? Because the mu's cancel, the one-fourths cancel, and we end up with k to the one-fourth times l to the negative three-fourths divided by k to the negative three-fourths times l to the one-fourth. And look at this, this actually simplifies to just k divided by L, because K to the one-fourth divided by K to the negative three-fourths, we subtract the exponents if we're dividing, and we get one-fourth minus negative three-fourths, which is one-fourth plus three-fourths, or one. And L to the negative three-fourths minus another one-fourth is L to the negative one, which is right there. So we combine these and we get this nice simple equation like so, okay? Let's solve this thing for K. And we get k is equal to w over r times l. What's this telling us? Uh, if you have more labor, you should hire more capital. If the cost of capital r is high, hire less capital, and so on. Okay? All right. Now we take this and we bring it into our last equation. Okay? So let's first set this equal to... Let's move all this material to the other side. And then let's plug this in for K. And we get Q is equal to W over R times L to the one fourth times L to the one fourth. Okay? This simplifies to Q equals W over R to the one fourth times L to the one half because we have one fourth here and one fourth there we add them together we get one half all right next up we're going to solve for l 
L to the one half is equal to R over W to the one fourth times Q. I divided each side of the equation by W over R to the one fourth, which gives me this. Notice they flipped R and W. And then I just need to square everything. And I get that L is equal to R over W, one fourth multiplied by two is one half times Q squared. All right, last but not least, this guy here. We know that K is equal to W over R times L, and we know L is equal to this. So we substitute this in, and we can do a little simplification. W raised to the power of one divided by W raised to the power of one half is W to the power of one half. And R to the one half power here divided by R to the first power of one is R to the negative one half or like so. And we get these two equations. These are our little starred demands that are functions of Q, W, and R, okay? And look, you can check to see if they make sense. If Q goes up, you need more labor. That makes sense. If you need to produce more output, you're gonna need more inputs. If W goes up, if the cost of labor goes up, then L actually goes down because we're dividing by it. And that makes sense too. If the cost of labor goes up, you're going to consume relatively less labor if you're trying to minimize cost. Notice on over here, if the cost, if W goes up, then K goes up too. And that's because you still have to produce Q. If the cost of labor goes up, you're gonna use less labor and more capital because capital is relatively cheaper. All right, the last step, remember there's a fifth step for the cost function is to take these and plug them into our actual cost function. So we have W times L uh, star plus R times K star. And let's substitute in our values here. We get W times R over W to the one half power times Q squared plus R, and we'll plug in this stuff up here. W over R to the one half times Q squared. And in a sense, we're done. We found the cost function. It tells us how much it costs to produce Q if we know the labor costs and the uh, cost of capital. But this particular equation can be simplified a little bit further, and so I'm going to do that, okay? W to the power of one divided by W to the one half is W to the one half. So we end up with W times R all to the one half power because this one here gets is divided by uh, the square root of W. We still have our Q squared here. Same over here, R to the power of one divided by the square root of R is R to the one half power. And notice that these two terms are exactly the same, okay? And that tells us that we can simplify this to this here. Oops, not a good two. And this is our simplified cost function, you know, trying to make it look nicer. And again, think about the intuition. Does this make sense? This is telling us how much does it cost to produce Q. If Q goes up, the cost goes up. If the wage rate goes up, the cost goes up. If R goes up, the cost goes up. But what's kind of interesting is these exponents, all right? If Q goes up, we have the cost goes up a lot because we square it. Why is that the case? Well, notice that this production function way up here that we started with has decreasing returns to scale, okay? Uh, if you double all the inputs, you don't double the outputs. And if we have to pay for all those inputs, that means if we need to make twice as much, we need more than twice as much inputs, and so the cost goes up you know, really high, really fast. 
On the other hand, the W and R only are raised to the power of one half. And that's because if one of them rises, we don't necessarily have to increase our cost proportionally by the same amount because we can shift over to using more capital when labor is expensive or shift over to using more labor when capital is expensive. And so the cost is not as responsive to changes in those variables. If they both change, so if W and R both go up by the same amount, say they both double, well then we have 2W times 2R or 2 squared times WR. 2 squared raised to the power of 1 half is just 2. And so you can see that if they both double, the costs double. All right, that's where the cost function comes from.